Hey guys, my name is Dice Roland. Today we're going to be taking a look at some facts you didn't know about the movie that turned Jack Nicholson into a werewolf. Wolf was directed by Mike Nichols and tells the story of a middle-aged publisher whose life is less than perfect. When he's bitten by a wolf on the night of a full moon, every aspect of his life is changed. So without further ado, these are some things you didn't know about Wolf. Feels good to be wolf, doesn't it? Power without guilt, love without doubt. The term werewolf is never used in the film. Demon wolf is the term used in its place. This is the first movie to have Alice and Janney appear in it. During the scene where Will finds that his sense of hearing has been enhanced, we hear a man say, No, I'm not gonna do it. This was the voice of Mike Nichols. Despite what some people believe, the third act was not reshot. The moment where Will leaps out of the stable he was locked in was added because the studio felt a little more action was needed. Just this shot cost almost a million dollars. This is the second time that Michelle Pfeiffer, Jack Nicholson, and Richard Jenkins have appeared in a movie together. The first was The Witches of Eastwick. The stunts that we see James Spader's stuntman do on screen were all done without protection or wires. He almost sustained serious injury while filming the scene of Stuart being thrown onto the steps. While explaining the demon wolf lore to Will, Dr. VJ Alizaeus says that the night Will was bitten, March 8th, the moon was the closest to the Earth it's been in a hundred years. March 8th, 1993, there was a super peregrine moon, meaning the moon was closest to the Earth during its orbit. The black wolf we see walking across the road just before Will hits it wasn't actually a wolf. It was an Alexander Archipelago Wolf German Shepherd, hybrid from Working Wildlife Animal Sanctuary. Yes, one of the police officers in the zoo is indeed a pre-friends David Schwimmer. The look of the werewolves was heavily inspired by that of Henry Hull in Werewolf of London. James Spader was given more facial prosthetics than Jack Nicholson because he needed to show the same power as Nicholson. For the scene where Will hunts and kills a deer, six real deer, one taxidermy deer, and a mechanical deer were used. The howls we hear from Will aren't actually Jack Nicholson. They were provided by Doug voice actor Fred Newman. The unique building seen in Wolf as the publishing house is actually the Bradbury Building in Los Angeles, California. The voice we hear over the phone during Will's wake-up call is Elaine May. The explanation of Laura's apparent burgeoning transformation at the end of the movie is due to two things. One is the intimate physical interaction with Will, and the other is Laura already had a wolf-like aspect to her character. Michelle Pfeiffer was originally supposed to wear a hooded red sweatshirt during the final act of the movie. However, she refused to do so because she thought it would lessen the film's credibility. It took a little over a decade for Wolf to get made. During the filming of the movie, Michelle Pfeiffer got engaged, married, and adopted a baby girl. Mike Nichols, Jim Harrison, and Wesley Strick changed a lot about the character of Laura once Michelle Pfeiffer showed interest in the part. They made the character stronger and more essential to the story instead of a woman in danger like in the original script. Jack Nicholson is allergic to spirit gum, which caused Rick Baker to use a different type of adhesive for his wolf-like makeup. However, Baker did accidentally use spirit gum once on Nicholson after using it on James Spader. The next day, Nicholson arrived with large red swells on his face. Baker ended up apologizing to the actor, to which Nicholson responded with, Well, let's just hope it doesn't happen again. Thankfully for both Nicholson and Baker, it didn't. Just like in a lot of movies, actors are replaced, rejected, or just decline a role before and throughout production. Mia Farrow was originally sought to play the part of Charlotte Randall, but due to Columbia Pictures being hesitant to cast her over the Woody Allen trial at the time and scheduling conflicts, this didn't happen. Marlon Brando expressed interest in taking the role of Raymond Alden, but Christopher Plummer was eventually cast in the part. Sharon Stone was offered the part of Laura Alden, but she turned it down. Most 
most curious of all was the time in which Raymond Alden was almost Laura's brother, instead of her father. Just as it was decided that he would be her father, Mick Jagger was waiting to take on the role. But since the character was now the father, Jagger was told he wasn't right for the part. Jack Nicholson actually had a big part in Who Would Direct Wolf. As it turned out, Mike Nichols was one of his choices. To date, this is the last horror movie that Jack Nicholson has starred in. Some of the changes to the original script were Will being a publisher instead of a lawyer. It was felt that this would be a fresher approach. And the ending saw Laura visiting the fully transformed Will on a secluded portion of land via helicopter. Apparently, while Wesley Strick was writing the scene in which Will hunts and kills a deer, an actual deer appeared outside his window. Everyone involved in the writing and creation of the movie had a different approach to the tone of it. While Mike Nichols looked at the film as being about death and loss, Jim Harrison, Doug Wick, and Jack Nicholson saw it as being about a celebration of liberation and oblivion. Will's last name, Randall, actually means shield wolf in Old Norse. Both Rick Baker and Am Puri were excited to go through the makeup process of turning the actor into an old man. As a matter of fact, it was Baker's favorite bit of work he did for the film. So those were some facts about Wolf you may not have known. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a comment down below telling me what other horror movies you'd like to see me dig up some facts about. See you later.